although May started colder and drier than average, since the 12th of May, we have averaged five millimetres of rain every day. Land drains are now running and the water table is high. In fact, we in low lying areas, we have standing water in our fields now. So although conventional farmers initially welcomed the rain, the wet and dark weather is becoming a bit of a concern. In addition, from a regenerative point of view, regular rainfall at this time of year is a particular challenge. Starting with all seed rape, sclerotinia infections in all seed rape or canola occurs when wet petals carrying the infectious spores stick to the lower leaves. And we won't know the extent of the infection until we put the combines in. So I thought it was worth revisiting this crop and to check on progress to date. Of course, we already have all seed rape in the uh, ground. It's our last effort at growing uh, winter rape. But uh, same as last year, we had it broadcast into the standing crop with our Coon Aero and uh, about the 22nd of July and we will control it by its access to nitrogen. So at the moment I think it's looking, coming along nicely. So to put it into perspective, it's got about four, four, it's already one died back, but that plant's got sort of four true leaves, uh, no slug damage, pretty pleased with this. This was mixed with fenugreek, which smells like mustard to try and ensure um, uh, to try and keep the flea beetle away. It was sown at seven kilos a hectare. We have an application of digestate uh, planned for this field, which should give it 50 kilos of N. So that's the plan, and I look forward to following this crop th through to a uh, successful harvest. So here we are the 13th of September, it's continued to grow nicely, the rape has, you can just about see the dark mark where the digestate has been spread. Um, temperatures are quite good, we're in the 20s today, so hopefully it will begin to really kick on now. So it's not quite past stubble height, the eye is still catching stubble rather than the rape, but there's plenty of rape out here. Our rape has only had 70 kilos of nitrogen uh, in the form of digestate so far. So no fungicides, no insecticides, but with this increasing disease pressure as a result of this rainfall, uh, should we treat the crop now? So we have decided against a fungicide, but we are planning one fi final foliar N treatment with an additional 15 kilos of nitrogen and we've decided to add a carbon source when we do the foliar spray. The after effects of many late frosts during flowering are as yet unknown but the crop has finished flowering and is beginning to pot up nicely. So when I was uh, crop walking the rape I thought it was an ideal opportunity to demonstrate what an understory of white clover, our living mulch, really looks like in practice. Morning everybody, there's been a lot of talk uh, this week about uh, living mulches or pictures of living mulches on Twitter. So I just wanted to give you an example of ours. I know uh, I posted a video a couple of weeks ago uh, about us planting uh, clover into standing wheat as a companion crop but uh, this feels a good example because we blew clover into a standing crop of wheat last year it established well before I uh, blew all seed rape 
into the standing wheat at harvest. So the uh, clover was already established and then it, it was a companion crop for fenugreek and all seed rape which we established. So uh, as you can see this is the field behind me. It's getting to the end of flowering. It's beginning to pod up nicely. So we did use curb during the winter which significantly knocked the population of clover back. But in the thinner parts of the field where there's less competition I just wanted to show you the plant population of clovers which for me is much better to be growing very aggressive clover that has a that spreads out flat and covers the ground than to be growing weeds so this is about an eight hectare field we've got to have got an empty bit here along this old fence line but otherwise uh, this field is pretty good on the headlands as well where the digestate was being spread it got pretty heavily hammered down and uh, the rape suffered but the clover don't ignore the thistle but uh, the clover has come really well so here's another chunk of small patch of pigeon damage so i guess we're only about i don't know 20 15 meters by 15 but the clover is really acting there's a patch of stinging nettles but very effective competition to the weeds and I would expect when I drill wheat through here next year that we will get a yield lift from this and potentially the rape is getting uh, is being able to benefit from the stored nitrogen too of course being a brassica it can't form any mycorrhizal associations but mother nature must have uh, engineered a solution interesting the clover goes right up to the edge of the plants up to the rape so my theory is that it's probably forming some sort of association and that's our effort at a living mulch.